you very much. I'm Ron Reagan. Animals. We do love them. Americans spend billions of dollars a year on the care and feeding of our pets, and the humane treatment of animals has become a pet cause for many of us. Still, does an animal, even our favorite family pet, have rights equal to those of a human being? Animal rights advocates say yes. Many others say no. Not when it comes to animal testing that could result in finding a cure for cancer or AIDS. In any case, animal rights is becoming one of the most volatile and violent issues in our country. Animal rights activists have been around for nearly a century, but the past decade has seen the movement emerge as a fierce and vocal force to be reckoned with. Their goal? Abolish all use of animals for medical research, entertainment, food, and clothing. Hi, I'm Mike Farrell, and this is my friend Jason. Helping to keep the animal rights issue in the public eye are a number of celebrities, including singer Katie Lang, whose recent Meat Stinks campaign, in which she urged people to become vegetarians, raised a stink with the beef industry. If you knew how meat was made, you'd lose your lunch. I know, I'm from cattle country, and that's why I became a vegetarian. Meat stinks, and not just for the animals, but for human health and the environment. Like most people, I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows. I consider the plight of these performers who did not choose to be in the entertainment business. You don't have to be an activist to disavow blatant animal abuse. These scenes captured on home video are horrible. Not many would disagree. Where opinions do differ, even within the animal rights movement, is on the use of laboratory animals for biomedical research. Research that in the past has led to medical breakthroughs, such as the polio vaccine. The question of the morality of using animals in biomedical research has surfaced many, many times in the history of science. Because of pressure by animal activists, many members of the medical community feel the need to defend their practices, as they did recently in New York. And it's not that researchers place a low value on animals, but that society places a high priority on the preservation of human life. Joining me now is one of the people most responsible for the burgeoning animal rights movement in America, Ingrid Newkirk, the National Director of People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. Also here is former MTV VJ Martha Quinn, a strong believer in animal rights. Still. Sir, was it, you're still? Still on. I don't know why they said for She's still an MTV DJ, VJ. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what do I know? I don't watch MTV. Um, we tried to get a lot of people from, say, the food industry, beef industry, uh, cosmetics industry, uh, hunters here. They didn't want to come on the show because they didn't want to tangle with you, a lot of them. So that leaves me in the position of, of being devil's advocate, and I'll, I'll play that role. So, starting with this. Uh, according to PETA, and I'm quoting here, there is no rational basis for separating out the human animal. A rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy. They're all mammals. Now you've got a you've got a biological point there, but do you really believe that on an ethical basis? Well, actually, that's part of a quote that said, when it comes to feelings, a rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy. Because, as you say, you learn that in Biology 101. You can't argue that. It's true. And researchers like to sort of decide that most animals aren't important at all, and they don't have any feelings. They're test tubes with whiskers, if you will. You can use them and just chuck them in the trash. And I like to remind people all the time that any individual who feels pain, who has an interest in being alive, who suffers and can be joyful or lonely, should be respected for those feelings. And we shouldn't just imagine animals are cartoon figures or inanimate objects. But is a rat really equivalent to a, to a human, human being? When it comes to feelings, yes, they are. They may be ugly to most people. They may be unpopular. You may not want them in your home, and I understand that. Oh, I have nothing against rats, <laughs> per se. I mean, rats but are fine. really, they're, they're mammals who feel pain. And sometimes, especially in the lab, there are terrible things done to them because experimenters don't imagine that anybody would care. And I want to make the point that when you get to know any animal, whether it's small or large or uh, anything, that that animal does count for something. We shouldn't just disrespect them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's push this to the extreme here. You're walking down the railroad tracks and there, lashed to the, uh, <laughs> to the tracks, are your best friend, human, and your best canine friend. Here comes the train. 
You have an equal opportunity to, to, to rescue either, but not both. What do you do, flip a coin? It's lousy, but I would give you another thing. I mean, you know we would all go, and we would, it wouldn't be a good moral choice, because you should try to rescue them both. Can't, though. My, my pick friend one. always says the difference between the animal abusers and the animal protectors is that once you've rescued your best friend or your mother or your child, you would go back if you were an animal protector. The animal abuser would walk away. Um, but say, as Burke Brethard said in a speech, it were a mass murderer and a dog who had just saved a baby from a pond. Which would you choose? So all these equations are, are difficult, but we always choose those closest to us. But it's not that kind of decision that we're forced to make every day. No, that's true. You're a vegetarian. Yes. By choice, not yes, by some sort of medical circumstance. I, I'm a vegetarian and I'm a cruelty-free individual. I don't wear any kind of animal products inside or out. Shoes aren't leather. No, oh, oh, can't no leather. catch me on that. <laughs> I was just checking there. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm, it's, it's hard. I mean, I, I went in stages. I first being just, you know, it wasn't a political uh, decision. It wasn't um, any statement. I just, one day, I've always been an animal lover, and one day I saw a guy fishing, and he reeled up this big fish, and that fish was struggling and gasping and I just looked at that, and I just said, that's it. I just don't want to be a part of that anymore. So I stopped eating all kinds of meat, still wearing leather, thinking, oh, well, that's kind of different. They're going to die anyway, right. so why not use the but leather? But then that, the that started to creep away. You know, you sort of go in stages, and I finally did have to say, okay, you know, people do say, oh, well, the cows die anyway, but the cows don't die for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I, so I don't. I now have no part of even that um, to the, you know, even. And I've been reading recently where celebrities are g making the alternate to first to what they call exotic leathers, mm -hmm. um, lizard, etc. And it's like, no, this is not exotic leather. This is furless fur. This is fur mm -hmm. with a different texture. So uh, all of these things, I, as a personal choice, have cut out of my life. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just getting warmed up here. When we come back, we'll talk to two members of the medical community concerned that animal activism may interrupt valuable research. Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose, Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. It does the job. Alka Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. Need to clean little messes without the big noise? Get the new Dirt Devil Sweeper. Tired of fumbling with a broom and dustpan? Get the new Dirt Devil Sweeper. It cleans forwards or backwards and empties in a snap. Get the new Dirt Devil Sweeper. For those of you who have been reluctant to wear a hearing aid, Miracle Ear has more great news. If you have trouble hearing in noisy situations, the exciting Miracle Ear Clarifier may be your answer. The Clarifier features a special filter that automatically reduces background noise. I used to dread going out with my friends. Background noise kept me from joining in the conversation. But the Miracle Ear Clarifier reduces background noise. Now I can hear and understand just fine, even in noisy restaurants. If you or someone you know thinks they may be suffering from hearing loss, call Miracle Ear at this number and receive helpful information. I can participate in the conversations now. I can hear them, and I don't have to tune out. Find out if Miracle Ear can help you. Call this number. Miracle Ear will send you a booklet on better hearing, plus a coupon for a free hearing test. Call today. Learn about all the good news from Miracle Ear. For thousands of great sale items, this is the best week to buy at Sears. Take our comfortable flex slacks. Get two pairs of these regular fit polyester slacks for just $30. It's our lowest price in three years. But hurry, Sears' best week to buy ends soon. Princess Di, Magic Johnson. It's people's year-end double Perry, issue. Anita Hill. The 25 Brooks, most Elton intriguing John, people Madonna, of 1991. Elizabeth Taylor. Mick Jagger, All in people's year-end double Tom issue, Tom starring the 25 Prince most William, intriguing Michael people. Michael Jackson. Brooke Shields.
Welcome back. We're talking about animal rights, specifically the use of animals for medical, household, and cosmetic testing. Joining our panel, Dr. John Young, a doctor of veterinary medicine responsible for the humane treatment of laboratory animals at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Also welcome Dr. Edward Remmers, a research scientist who put together a recent press conference on animal testing for the American Council on Science and Health. Thank you both very much for being here. Thank you. Um, before we go any farther, I have to do a little book plug here. I forgot. Ingrid's got a new book out, and it's called Kids Can Save the Animals, 101 Easy Things to Do. There you go. There's the book plug. Oh, It's a pamphlet, too. Yes. Laboratory Animal this Testing, an essential book. component of biomedical research. That we introduced <laughs> yesterday at our right. press. Fair's fair. fair. Right. I got your... Okay. Now. Have animals been treated inhumanely in the past, and are they being treated inhumanely today in the name of biomedical research and what have you? I think we'd be insulting the intelligence of you and your viewing audience if we said there was never any cases of animal abuse in research laboratories. There has been documented cases of animal abuse. Um, to say that it is commonplace, however, is erroneous. Um, at my facility, I can attest to you and to all viewers that there is no animal abuse in my medical center, nor am I aware of any abuses which are occurring in medical centers that I'm aware of. If it is occurring, it's an exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you go about treating an animal humanely when the experiment that the animal is involved in involves bashing its head in, for instance? There are some situations where you do have to injure an animal. For example, if you're studying and trying to find a new painkiller, you have to study that in an animal experiencing pain. There are certain situations like this where the animal must experience the, the thing. If I can interject, but, excuse me, Ed. We're not talking about severe, uncontrolled pain. For instance, there's a test called the tail flick test. A rodent is placed in a plastic restrainer and its tail is, 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 is free to be uh, uh, f touched by a, a ray of light. We're talking about sensitivity here. We give an analgesic or a pain-killing drug and we test whether or not that rat moves its tail away from the beam of light which is projected upon it. That is a pain experiment. But you and I could hold our hand underneath that beam of light and feel no extreme discomfort. But I can That's give, you, I can give you another example of, of, of an experiment. I won't mention the doctor's name and I won't mention the university he's affiliated with. He has a grant from the Department of Defense and for years he's been bashing cat, cats' heads in for the Defense Department. Under Just anesthesia. To see well, under anesthesia. I hope so. Absolutely. I mean, well, that's, that's an important point to <laughs> make, I said to you, listen, you I'll give you an right. anesthetic, but I'm going to gonna bash defending? your head in. You'd be a little upset, I think. Absolutely. But it is under anesthesia, and the animal is not feeling distress or pain. It's, it's incapable of perceiving pain uh. during the experiment. Distress, though, I imagine. <laughs> large, not when it's an yes. The animals are under anesthesia at the time that they're being evaluated. But never have to remember, the point Ron, is, is not even that the animal might be experiencing pain, but that this guy's experiment is really pretty bogus. He's got a grant. I, I, I'm not going to mention his name. He's got a grant. He's had this grant for years. He's determined to keep this grant. And by God, if he's got to go on smashing cat heads for the next 50 years to keep that grant, he will. Okay. Right, but you have to look at what the benefits are. The, one of the men who introduced our booklet at our New York City press conference yesterday morning was doing three brain surgeries at the same time the night before he flew overnight to come to New York City to introduce our booklet. These were people, all in their 20s, who were involved in either automobile or uh, motorcycle accidents who had very, very serious brain injuries. And uh, this particular fellow happens to be a very, very well-known uh, brain neurosurgeon. Uh, he has done wonders, and all of his work in brain surgery uh, has been based in laboratory animals. And he came to New York just to defend this. If you uh, go back and look, of the last 75 Nobel Prizes in medicine and physiology, 50 of those Nobel Prizes have been based on laboratory animal work. Mm -hmm. And what I'm concerned about is the terrorism that is taking place. <laughs> in uh, the the people who break into labs okay. we'll, and liberate these animals. We will get to that. But Ingrid, what about them? No polio vaccine, no, no. heart transplants, no nothing I, without I animal I thought it was testing. interesting that they will defend absolutely anything. And if anybody has any doubts that animals don't suffer pain, I, it's pathetic to talk about the tail flick test. I mean, that's just blatantly dishonest. I can show you animals today in University of California laboratories having cats having their paws put on hot plates while they're burned fully conscious, animals electro-implanted while they're fully conscious, and having head injuries. The one you pointed out, the very experiment you mentioned at LSU, veterinarians and physiologists have criticized it because the experimenter, and I'll share in not mentioning his name, but we'll send anybody this, 
did not properly administer anesthesia. I must the think exceptions to her institutional cause. review committees that have to review rubber these experiments committees. in advance. Absolutely. Your and they take a look at the pro protocol, the number second. of species, and to make sure that the animals are treated. Would you please and let me talk? Wait a minute. Let me talk. we got to go to a commercial. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment with a oh. hair care mogul who doesn't believe in animal testing and a heart transplant recipient who does. <laughs> Great legs. Thank you. How do you get them? I used to do aerobics till I dropped. Then I found Thigh Master. Every single time you squeeze Thigh Master, you strengthen and tone right where you need it. So it's easy to squeeze, squeeze your way to shapely hips and thighs. I thought I'd never fit into these jeans again. Thank you, Thigh Master. I recommend it and use it. The secret to shapely thighs is exercising these muscles with just the right resistance. This balance resistance coil is designed to give you results quickly and comfortably. Want to tone your upper chest and arms? Thigh Master will give you excellent results. Thigh Master, we may not have been born with great legs, but now we can look like we were. To order your Thigh Master, call 1-800-223-2200. Have your credit card ready or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 for shipping and handling to this address. No CODs, please. If you're not fully satisfied, return it in 30 days for your money back. Plus, if you call right now, we'll also send you Suzanne's Lander for Life Plan absolutely free. Thigh Master is not available in stores, so act right now. Imagine a party so big, everyone in America is invited. Fox presents New Year's Eve Live, a coast-to-coast -coast celebration that has it all. Featuring Sam Kinison in L.A. Rock steady in the 92! Penn and Teller in New York. Fox asked us to make 1991 disappear. <laughs> With special appearances by Southside Johnny. And the number one rock and roll band in the world, Live, Guns and Roses. New Year's Eve Live, a 90-minute special on Fox. Who can you trust these days to take care of your car when it starts shaking? Or pulling, or rattling, or squeaking. For suspension or alignment, nobody beats Midas. I worry about something I can't see. What your eyes can't see, our state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment will show you. You'll get a written estimate before we start. No surprises. Whatever the problem, we keep it from getting bigger. For alignment shocks or struts, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Welcome back. We're discussing the pros and cons of using animals for biomedical research. Joining us now is John Paul Jones de Joria, whose Paul Mitchell hair care products use no animal testing, and two-time heart re uh, transplant recipient Cynthia Jelkman, chairperson of the incurably ill for animal research. Um, John Paul, first of all, welcome to the show. <laughs> Appreciate being here. Thank you. How do, you, uh, how do you go about ensuring the safety of your products if you can't test them on animals? Real simple. I test them first on myself. I make products for human beings, not for animals. So I test them first on myself. Once they pass my test, I test them on my children. Yeah. I have that much confidence in what I do. How can you be sure that, the, uh, that some of the, the separate ingredients in your products haven't been tested on animals previously? Well, with all products that we've made from day one, I tell my vendors that whatever we have, to the best of your knowledge, has not been tested on an animal. Now, if anything was tested previously, there's a possibility it may have slipped by. I don't know. But as far as the best of their knowledge is concerned, the products they have have not been tested on animals. There has been no need. And the actual formulation, once it's put together, is only tested on human beings. Why don't all companies do this? Why do, uh, why do companies test on animals? Politics. They don't have to? You want to know why? Politics. If you had a research department that had 100 scientists working and you were funded quite largely, and your executive vice president had that as one of his divisions, you're not going to want to lose your job or your position. But I think you've seen more in the last year that most companies realize they're wasting money killing millions of animals needlessly to see if a cosmetic works on a human being when you don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misconception in the past. 
And Ron, I find might say people should really make the effort to inquire from the Humane Society or People for Ethical Treatment to Animals about which cosmetics are animal tested and which are not. I like to have pretty lipstick and mascara and hairspray too, but I don't need it so badly that I need animals to die for it. So all of Martha's makeup is uh, cruelty free. I could tell you the. Well, Ron, could I make a point? Sure. Uh, I'm not in, I'm in the bed in biomedical research community. However, there are three major cosmetic companies, which I will, will leave unnamed, which advertise cruelty-free products. Mm -hmm. They, in fact, don't test their products in their house, in their own labs. They buy their products from companies that do test them. And as a matter of fact, their lawyers won't let them market them without animal testing because they'd be sued and quite inappropriately So quite you're inappropriately saying they're, so. they're false advertisers? It, it, they're, they're duping the it's consumer. So does that, this, does one of those groups No, this, this, no. this gentleman is not one of those three. Say, exactly. Of course, the reason he won't say the name is because if you said the name, you'd be sued because it's not no, true. No, I'll say the name. I'll say the name. Go ahead, say it. Avon, Revlon, and Mary Kay Cosmetics. Mary Kay, Revlon, and what was the other one? Avon. Avon. Well, there goes those sponsors well, for our show. Like say something? <laughs> you know, I've heard nothing here today about constantly talking about the abuse of animals. Now, I'm not saying, as, as John said, it would be you know, um, making people uh, feel stupid if they, if they thought that animals weren't being abused at some time. But it's not the norm. And these isolated cases, I think we should all look at what the good has come out of animal testing. Absolutely. That we have all of our, that we have all the modern conveniences of vaccinations, uh, heart valves, uh, surgical techniques insulin and for insulin for diabetics. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you be here without on, animal experimentation? I would not be here if it hadn't been for the study of dogs in heart transplant surgery in the 1950s to perfect that procedure. And frankly, I wouldn't have liked to have a heart transplant if I didn't know that it, mm -hmm. ha it had been it, it, done, done on an animal. Ingrid, before. how do you test heart transplants without using an animal first? It's very, it's very simple. We're, what we're talking about is the 1950s, and I'm trying to talk about the 1990s. Things aren't done that way unless you're lazy now. We are innovative people. We're compassionate people. Dr. DeBakey, who is world-renowned for his heart surger, surgery, no longer teaches by using animals. His students don't learn that way. And the way people train nowadays is they apprentice beside a skilled surgeon. They don't think that by operating on a goat, that they can walk in and take your heart out. That's but can teaching. you develop That's a radical transplant right. procedure like heart transplantation Ron, without well, trying Ron, it yeah, first on a goat? Baby Faye, which of course only, happened here, excuse uh -huh. me, Baby Faye, which happened here, killed 300 animals before it got to Baby Faye, and then it killed Baby Faye. We have to look beyond um, heart transplants, but heart transplants don't come from animal tests. That's a fact. There's a yes, wonderful they do. Book. The drugs yes, that are do. used for the immunosuppression were oh, tested in animals. Oh, immunos you know Yes, they were. You know it's so cool. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this. All right, very quick, because i got to go to a commercial. All drugs today are tested on animals because you fight to keep it that way. That's the way of the past. And in heart transplants specifically, uh, immunosuppression I would like right. to take FK5. Well, let's, you, you, can, you can answer this. Wait a minute. Let me do this. More on animal rights versus animal testing when we return. <laughs> I really couldn't find anything that really worked or looked natural until I seen a, a commercial on Hair Club for Men. And I thought, well, why don't I send away for the brochure? Our booklet contains a comprehensive discussion about hair loss, Hair Club's non-surgical strand-by-strand -strand method, and our latest innovation, the Polyfuse method, which literally fuses top-quality human hair to your own hair. When I went to the Hair Club and I got my system, it really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion and that made me feel a lot more comfortable when you're in clubs and you know want to ask people to dance and you don't want to look like you're 40 when you're 24 23 years old but once I had the process done now I can be spontaneous um, I can swim when I want to and not worry about my hair until I'll dry my hair get out get some rays and the wind doesn't affect me anymore I don't mind the wind at all and by the way I'm not only the heckler president but I'm also a client If you take some of the area's leading lady stores and boutiques,
us in a Neiman Marcus and a Saks Fifth Avenue, then mark everything in stock down to up to 70% off, you'd have the winner. The world's largest, most exciting off-price ladies' fashion store. Select from over 200 designer labels, including Calvin Klein, Anthony Sicari, Tahari, and many more. Choose from a stunning selection of the latest in formal wear, casual wear, and sports wear in petite, women's, misses, and plus sizes. You'll also want to shop the winner's outstanding selection of fashion jewelry and accessories. Always marked down to up to 70% off every day. Plus, be sure to shop the breathtaking Bavarian Village gift shops and the timeless interiors the next time you visit the winner. The winner, the world's largest off-price ladies' fashion store, has everything you're looking for at everyday savings of up to 70% off. So why wait for a sale when you can shop the winner in downtown Sharon, Pennsylvania? The winner, where wise women shop. The Ron Reagan Show will continue in a moment. For thousands of great sale items, this is the best week to buy at Sears. All furniture is on sale. Save big on all sofas, all sectionals, all bedrooms, all dinettes, all recliners, all mattresses. So hurry, Sears' best week to buy and soon. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country is now playing at theaters everywhere. But you can call the Star Trek line. Complete three of the all-new games and earn your official Starfleet Commander's Patch. Call now and enter the Star Trek Adventure Contest, and you may win a Zoo Life Safari for two to Asia, Africa, or Australia. Don't miss this Star Trek adventure of a lifetime. Call 1-900-646-TREK now. Takes about one minute to enter contest and about four minutes to play each new game. $1.45 first minute, 95 cents each additional minute. Princess Di, Magic Johnson. It's People's Year-End Double okay. Issue. Anita Hill. The 25 Brooks, most intriguing John, people Madonna, of 1991. Taylor, Mick Jagger, All in People's Year-End Double Tom Issue, Tom starring the 25 Prince most William, intriguing Michael people. Michael Jackson, Brooke Shields. We're back discussing animal rights, animal abuse. Okay, Martha, you're a vegetarian. You don't wear leather. You use cr cruelty-free cosmetics. But what about this biomedical question? You know, Ron, I, this is not my field of expertise. I know that. And, I, I'm, and I'm not anyway. going to enter into uh, this area. I, I don't know the answer to this. I only know what, what is right for, for myself. And I would like to say, in the face of, of the research that, that everybody has been talking about, I don't know the answer. I really feeling, don't. Though. But What's what I feeling do know is that there are several options that we have when we live our life to live our lives where we are compassionate and more aware of all of God's creatures in whatever area it might be, in your diet, in your choice of cosmetics, in your choice of clothing. I don't know the answer for you if, well, if your heart transplant might not have been the right okay, thing. Okay, and I, and I say fine, but maybe there are other things that you can do in your life uh, a more what vegetarian What could you have diet. done if you would have gotten a flu, okay? I, again, and, I'm not, and, I'm no, not let me debate, debate you please. on the I'm testing not, I'm issue. not asking you to debate me. I'm just ma stating a point. If you get a flu that damages your heart at an early age, what are you going to do? There was no way of preventing that, and that's what happened to okay, me. Am I going to die? Okay, it feels to me like you're trying to bait me into well, a test. Okay, I'm sorry, that, which I but I would like to make on. one point. Basically, a computer is only as good as the information you feed into it. And I'm not saying that all testing on animals is, is the only way to go, that many of these things that you can do with alternate measures. But you have to have a basis for research, which means an animal model with blood, organs, you know, nerves, all these things running through in order to do heart research or any type I'm not talking about cosmetic industry right now. I'm talking about life-saving surgeries. I'm talking about, I'm talking about people with AIDS, people with uh, hepatitis. People what about with... AIDS? What, what's the state of AIDS research as regards animal and, experiments? And one, is, one more point, Ron. Through. One more point. Okay. Just one more. All right, one more. Okay. FK506 is the new drug that's going to be replacing cyclosporin. I personally would not like to ingest that drug unless I know it's safe. Well, the thing about today's medicine... I, I wanted to find out about... People drown me out, but AIDS, 
Only I human beings. No, he will. Uh, human beings are the only <laughs> animals. They're the only animals who die of AIDS. And we've had a decade now of injecting every animal on the earth, including chimpanzees, who are our closest living relatives in the animal kingdom, with AIDS. And we put them in small cages, stainless steel boxes, where they bash their heads against the side of the box because they are so miserable. They are so isolated from their own kind. Yet they don't die of AIDS. How can you possibly, and many physicians have said this, it's not just me, there are papers written in Science and Nature about this, how can you possibly give a chimpanzee, for example, an AIDS vaccine, and when the chimp doesn't die, say, looks good to me, I'll take it. There are computers, <laughs> there are computers that are programmed, she's exactly right, but, but you need to program them with animal human. data. You don't put in rat data, but garbage let in, Let the doctors, let, I, I want them to put answer that question. Data. How do you, how do you figure me. that out? You know, the only truth that, sh that Ingrid has said is that chimpanzees <laughs> Don't get AIDS, and she's absolutely right. They get there it. Is a, there she's is a, wrong. They get it. They, they don't do. Die they have it. simian AIDS. They have their own variation of AIDS, just as cats do and other animals. Yes, they do. They have retroviruses, oh. and they die Where did you at the go same. To school? They University have their of Pennsylvania. Oh. The incubation period is about ten years. If I, if I could please tell you about the incredible breakthrough. Okay, there is now please. a mouse that is immunodeficient. It does not have its own immune system. We can take mm -hmm. that mouse, inject into it a human human immune system. Take blood from you, separate out the cells in your blood that are responsible for your immune system and put it in that mouse. We now have a mouse with a human with immune system. We, we can take the AIDS virus, put it into that mouse, and now we have a mouse with a human immune system that has AIDS. And we can study new therapies, develop vaccines, and make incredible progress in AIDS. We can save the lives of children potentially who are born with AIDS, and we can never do that with computers, tissue cultures, or any other method. Well, let me ask you this. How do we go about go about experimenting and testing ethically? How do we avoid the head bashing cat experiments that are really just done to run this grant out? which he won't uh, have. How, Look how inside the lab. May, may I make a, may may a comment sure. for an entire come industry? To, I invite you to my lab. Come to my lab. Uh, See my <laughs> lab. I invite you. Sure, sure. Please, I'm not please accusing go. you of any please, please, let, me, let me give you one of ethics, okay? For starters, I'm obviously not a cosmetic industry. The majority of companies now in the cosmetic industry either have stopped, they follow our lead, and either stop testing on animals or in the process of doing that right now because it's unnecessary. The way somebody does something ethically is you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You test on yourself or the human beings. With today's scientific community, if something is good enough to be able to reproduce today, it's so good that your scientists know its reaction prior to coming out. So in the cosmetic industry, it's turning out to be there's absolutely no need and hasn't been for decades to test on animals. They're realizing that more and more, and they are stopping entirely testing on animals. And those Only few that are, and states. those and those few those few big companies that are are now considering phasing out of it. Ron, and sir, that is they're still lying to consumers. That's they're what still they lying. Say. You mean they're lying? Ron, I don't know. Ron, basically, I think I think most oh. of the medical community and people, you know out in the public, myself included, care about animals and don't want to see them harmed and would like to see alternatives being used. But the fact remains that right now there are certain circumstances which, which necessitate uh, an animal. And 99% 90, 90, of those animals are rats and mice. They are not dogs and cats. Those are 1% of all animals being used. 1% are Even dogs would, and under cats. Under any circumstances, mm -hmm. and just go with me on this, you, you know, you got to save this person, they're sick, whatever. The only way to find out if the procedure you want to perform will work is to experiment on an animal. Yeah. That's, that's my scenario here. You got to mm -hmm. stick with it. Would you in that case? I think you buy into a false equation, and I have to say that... Or no, I don't think you're ducking dishonest. the question. You're yeah. ducking the question. If you had to do it, would you do it or let the person die? I will not. Despite your uh, supporters who are here in force yelling you on, um, I'd say I will not duck the question, and I certainly will answer the question. But don't let us say, let's not make any changes. Let's not try to get weed out the unnecessary. Let's not yeah. weed out the cruel. I'm not, I'm not saying anything question. except if you had the animal and you had to test and the person was dying, would you under those I circumstances? I wouldn't test on my neighbor's child to save my child, and I wouldn't test on an animal to save my life because we're all important. Okay. We're all in it together, and you don't need to do it. And if right. you doubt That's, it... Now you answered my question. And with that, we'll go to another commercial break. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you.
With so many pet foods to choose from, which one do you trust to keep your pet healthy? Listen to the following message, and I'll be back with an important free offer. A lot of pet foods promise good health, but just one has the unsurpassed nutrition, quality ingredients, and proven performance that is recommended by veterinarians for good health above all the rest. Hill's Science Diet. Science Diet is recommended by veterinarians three to one over any other brand and fed by most veterinarians to their own pets. Science Diet, because the first choice of veterinarians should be your choice, too. I'd like to send you a free sample of the food veterinarians recommend three to one over any other. Science Diet. Call 1-800-354-7300 and receive this free sample pack with canine or feline formula. Science Diet, because the first choice of veterinarians is my choice, and it should be your choice, too. Since 1921, the Kane name has meant outstanding car and truck values to the Cleveland area. Hey, I'm Chuck Kane. In 1921, my father started this business. In 69, my son Patrick joined us. And in 83, my brother Mike started our Buy Here, Pay Here program. We finance thousands of affordable cars, and we can finance one for you. Fairly financing folks for over 70 years. Kane's Auto Exchange, 6400 Brook Park Road. Introducing the amazing Laser Beam wristwatch. Destined to become a legend in its own time, we believe it will soon be one of the most sought after watches in history. However, as part of a special publicity campaign, we will send you one of these amazing new Laser Beam luxury watches. Not for the hundreds of dollars you might expect, but for only $10. But to get your amazing Laser Beam wristwatch for only $10, you must act now. To order, call 1-800-438-7000. Our heated topic is animal rights. Our guests are animal rights activist and MTV VJ Martha Quinn, research scientist Dr. Edward Remmers, the developer of Paul Mitchell Hair Care Products, who opposes animal testing, John Paul Jones de Joria, chairperson for, of the incurably ill for animal research, Cynthia Jeltman, doctor of veterinary medicine at Cedar sinai Medical Center, Dr. John Young, and the national director of PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Ingrid Newkirk. Um, let's get away from strictly biomedical research here. I, I want to kind of broaden this out here for the last little bit. How far does this philosophy extend? Plants? Bugs? <laughs> no, but it affects animals that may be unpopular, like cows and pigs in the slaughterhouses. I love cows and pigs, and but what about bugs? On factory farms, but most people don't realize where their food comes from. And the best thing you can do for human health is not eat meat. Um, if you go to the slaughterhouse and you see the adrenaline causing through their veins and you see the stun gun not working properly and the animals going down the line shackled by a hind leg to be killed, you think, why am I buying into this if we're really humane? So vegetarianism is important, cruelty-free cosmetics are important, not dissecting in school using a computer alternative is important. There are many, many things you can do. Just look out for the other guy if the other guy happens to be an animal who's not a human being. Even if he's a bug? Even if he's a bug. Do you ever swat a mosquito? <laughs> I'm sure I've swatted many a mosquito. Uh... That's... Uh... I'm not <laughs> I used to eat meat for 21 years until I went to my first slaughterhouse. But all sorts of things. We're all on the same road, hopefully, except those who dig their heels in and say, animals don't count, we can do anything with them, we can use them in entertainment. We need to all be learning. Okay, yes, sir. Well, again, you haven't answered the question. You've said a rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy, and you seem to have based that, uh, that statement on the fact that they all have the ability to feel pain. And I know for a fact that slugs, for instance, have no susceptive responses that are more or less exactly the same as a rat. So is a slug, a rat, a pig, a dog, and a boy? And if so, how far down do you go down the line? Do plants have no susceptive responses? No, you have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, you you just have drawn the line at a different place than my Self, and I believe in a different place than most Americans. You know, um, once upon a time, the line was drawn at white men, and you'd have been okay then too. But over a period of time, our compassion expands, and we can't say, oh, how, how far human should it expand? How far I have should no it expand? idea where it will go, but I'm not afraid of walking the walk. 
and I know that dogs feel pain and so do you. I know that cows do and so do you. So do frogs. You know, you can, birds feel pain, so you can keep saying, Oysters? just me, just me, or you can say, look, one day we might be kind to plants, so let's not go anywhere. Let's just stay with us. Oh. No. Ooh. Yeah, well, I just want to point out that in the beginning of the show, you made a point of how much money is spent on pet care, mm -hmm. but one something that you overlooked is how much money we as a society spend on livestock care for a very small return we spend uh, i believe it's 30 percent of our our national product on on livestock etc when for the same amount of protein we could spend a lot less the amount of grains that livestock consumes could feed our population five times over easily. with the same easily, easily. easily. thank you easily. and we have a lot of starving yeah. people in this country alone who could use a lot of that protein and a little bit, uh, thank you for the, the uh, draw the line statement with a little bit of education we might all extend that line just a little bit but to feed a few more people and animal protein are totally different but vegetable proteins are basically incomplete proteins oh, when you eat a medical vegetable man proteins speak. You generally have to mix three or four different grains so together. So what's You can mix grains. That's a perfectly fine thing to do. It's not that hard. I've got a question here in the audience. Nice. That's not oh, so I won't hard. take exception to what you're saying, but I, there is a point to be made here. Cattle can graze off of grass and people can't. I mean, a, a cow's this, their digestive system allows it to digest plant fiber. Our digestive system is not built for me. Our digestive oh, system is. is not built for grass. Let's, let's English, bring it back English, out here. English, I, I, I'm not trying to contest question. your discussion. Hello. Hi. Remember me? I, I'm Hi, Ron. The show. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yes, sir. Hi. I have a question. I'd like to go back to your question. You mean you'd let yourself die over an animal, Ingrid? If I was on a desert island, for example, and I had to kill an animal to eat, I would not do it because well, I... Well, no one... No. I wouldn't do it. See... It's my life. Uh, but you hungry, don't, though? but the I mean, thing is, every day, excuse me, every sure. day you're not on a desert island and you don't have to make those choices. You're in the supermarket and you can look at those packages and think, what happened to that animal well, we're before not he about became that. We're talking a about medical package. research. Okay, I have a dog. I love my dog very much. If my wife was hurt and the doctor said, if we experimented on your dog, we might save your wife's life. Yes, my dog. I understand. Or, or your, and I'm going to back it up. And I'm going to go, your one, I'm going to go one step further. If it had not been for a pig but and his you, heart, you know, my father would not be here today. But things have moved on. We have humulin instead of, of pig insulin. We have all sorts of wonderful things today that we didn't have. So let's not dwell in the past. You know, the polio vaccine was tested on so many monkeys. Today, there's the Hayflick vaccine, which is, doesn't have the allergic responses, doesn't kill people, and doesn't come from animal products. What about AIDS? So let's fight together for it. AIDS is a perfect example of the failure of animal experiments. You will defend you want, you want instant cures. You want one animal, one cure. No, I want That's not money. how it works. I want money to go. You know, yeah. it's not a don't, don't be so sure. You never know. Yeah, with, with all due respect, I think what Ingrid is trying to point out in her own way, her own life, is that to her, it's not, will you experiment on an animal to save your wife? Would you experiment on your neighbor or your best friend to save your wife's life? No, I don't buy that. I think that's <laughs> I don't buy that I think because that's my neighbor or my wife is it, not an animal. It's a, but it's a life form. In it's a life you, form, but are very much animal. But it's, it's a life form. It's, 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 it's a life form. It's different. Not long it's, ago. Yes, it is. There's but a it's, life it's not a human it, life form. But there's a life entity in it. I, I, I'm in there's complete agreement with you, but it's not a human life. It's a There is a difference. Yeah, but we can distinguish. We're smart. You're a human being, this, you know, they, that's they a bug, Some baby you know, I'm not going to do that to you. Have, they but, don't have a complex uh, We do make these like distinctions. We do. Even Ingrid swats mosquitoes. Right. Some babies are smart, and we are ethical enough, finally, and we weren't always, to say we don't experiment on the institutionalized anymore. People on, in comas, less than 100 years ago, people were taking black people and experimenting on them, tr That's trying totally out irrelevant. gynecological oh. surgery. No, no, because no, they didn't no, think no, they no, were totally important. I think it's pretty that, irrelevant. I, 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 I don't think we're it is. Involving. I don't know. I'm, I mean, anyway, it, we're not going to solve that, but we have to go take a break. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> have to take a break. Be, be back in a moment. Princess Di, Magic Johnson. It's people's year-end double Perry. issue. Anita Hill. The 25 Brooks, most intriguing John, people Madonna, of 1991. Taylor, Mick Jagger, All in People's Year-End Double Tom Issue, Hanks, starring the 25 most intriguing Michael people. Jackson, 
Brook Shields. Those boring times are a thing of the past at 1-900-976-6000. Sometimes someone new to talk to makes all the difference in the world. Our new girls can change your world now at 1-900-976-6000. It's all talk just between you and one of our exciting girls. Come on, you're up to it. The girls are really here waiting for your call now at 1-900-976-6000. Just $3.99 per minute, must be 18. You see us wherever you go. Our lives are filled with excitement, adventure, and romance. And if you want to know what we're really like, just call. We'll do all the talking while you just listen. Call 1-900-407-6116. 12 minutes minimum at $3 per minute. Must be 18. Call us now. We all have fantasies, but most people are too afraid to talk about them. We're not. We love to share our secrets. So we've opened a special phone line to tell you all about our most intimate fantasies. Call this number now and listen to real fantasies from real women. We think you'll find them extremely entertaining. Call 1-900-976-3333. Five dollars per minute, no minimum. Must be 18 or older. Princess Di, Magic Johnson. It's People's Year-End Double Perry, Issue. Anita Hill. The 25 Brooks, most Elton intriguing John, people Madonna, of 1991. Elizabeth Taylor, Mick Jagger, All in People's Year-End Double Tom Issue, Cruz, starring the 25 Prince most William, intriguing Michael people. Michael Jackson, Brooke Shields. We're back. The discussion is about animal rights and animal abuse. When in the course of human history did it become unconscionable to use animals for flesh and hide and fur? Well, many, many years ago, people like um, Descartes thought that animals were nothing more than ticking machines, and you could eviscerate them in the labs without a thought. But there were other people, like Leonardo da Vinci, who said one day the murder of animals will be looked back on as the, as the murder of men. When in your mind, <laughs> in the course of human history, did it become... Where was that dividing line where it was no longer okay to hunt animals? Well, I think some people have always thought that way. It's just no, as people no, learn some people more... Have, no, we used to all hunt animals. So, no. There was a time when nobody thought that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know I, about I the cave you. people. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I, I can't help you. I well, wasn't Indian. back there. I think it's about but 11... Before we hunted, we were vegetarians. If you ri read Richard Leakey, a primatologist who we looked at our anatomy... Too. We ate, yes, we, we were scavengers. Okay. But we didn't actually cage animals, put them in tight places, cut off their beaks with a hot wire, no, and we then didn't do that, kill them to eat. But well, we that ate seems them. a step backwards, We not ate a step them and forward. we used their hides for fur and, and all that sort of thing. And so. now fur is déclassé. Who wants it? It's gross. Well, some people do. If you live up at the, up at the North Pole, you do. You well, want actually, that fur. Well, actually, actually, if you get polygod too, it's now warmer. Our technology has gone ahead of, Actually, uh, you're wrong. Actually, seal, uh, seal hide and fur remains the warmest uh, thing. They didn't use it to climb wear. Mount Everest. They didn't use it on the Antarctic expedition. Ingrid, um, I'd like to ask you one question. Do you think it would be ethical to uh, operate on a child that had not had that procedure been perfected in an animal? Would you like your child to be operated on for the first time? Well, or I take said, a medication? I said earlier, that argument was actually used by the military, who said, let us take our surgeons and have them operate on goats, and then send them to the Persian Gulf, and if our men and women get shot, let them work on those men and women. And we said, that isn't good enough. And we rounded up emergency room physicians who said, bring your surgeons in, and we will train them on gunshot wounds. We see them every Saturday night in all the major cities in this country. Don't pretend you can work on a human being because you've once done something on a goat or a dog. It doesn't work. Well, I, I don't agree I see you've with got that. A, a member of the audience, can I say one thing? Yeah, sure. The American Medical Association, which is the professional organization which represents over one over 50 million, over one half million practicing physicians Trade has stated in 1989 unequivocally <laughs> that every major medical advance that we have realized in the last century has been a result of either direct or indirect animal research, and that any medical advances we're going to realize in the next, at least foreseeable future, will depend essentially upon animal research. The Absolutely. American Medical Association says that. Okay. We have let, let half a million practicing here. physicians let in America say that. The okay. American all right. Medical all right. Association is a trade association for physicians. Okay. What else all right. is it going to say? Okay. Okay. Right. You say that 
um, animals, you don't, you wouldn't mind if they operated on animals. But what if they did your dog like that, or you know, like had them going through all that pain? Would you like? Are you addressing Cynthia, that to me? Cynthia, yeah, well, or I, anybody. What if it was well, your dog? They wanted to experiment. Personally, if on. if the choice came between my husband and my dog, I would choose my husband. It's as simple as that. I mean, oh. <laughs> yeah, Ron, I, I've, I've got a that, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're working on different sheets of music here. One is we're talking about cruelty to animals. Now, that's where you're talking from. This is what we're talking about, bashing heads, things like this. The other person over here is talking about becoming a vegetation, a vegetarian at least, <laughs> using products. Maybe a vegetation, but later. Yeah. <laughs> using products for different things. I think we need to get back on the same sheet of music as far as the discussion is concerned, because being cruelty to animals, that I totally agree with you. But some things have to be done for basic research. Absolutely. That's true. The other part of it, I cannot, this is somewhat of a comment on my part, but I, I just don't want to change my steak and potato for lettuce. I like it. I just don't want to make that comment. But that steak isn't good for you. It, it, that's you, good. Know. <laughs> you know, all I right. think we've also determined that in the cosmetic industry, it's unnecessary. And I think both doctors agree I with agree. me that in cosmetics, it is I unnecessary. I, I, run, run, sir, in the I run the largest hair care company in the United States of America. We do I'm not sorry. test on animals, never have, and no one's ever required me to. Right. But, John, but John, I'm concerned John? about cruelty to humans far more right. than I am. Sir, I do it to myself first. I think we've isolated But you're not cosmetic. representative, Ron. Oh, uh, humans you should be. Okay, I, 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 get a reaction I, I, I want to agree with John here on a point. Let's I want to agree with John. Oh, good. Okay? Good. If we right. don't, if the public does not require new and improved mascaras and cosmetics Absolutely. and new concoctions, we don't have to test them. We've already got enough. We have enough right. mascaras, enough lipsticks. Okay? But Absolutely. when the public demands new and improved and new shades, it would be irresponsible to market it without toxicity testing because when a child accidentally ingests it or puts it in his eye, the physician in the, in the emergency room has no data to base his treatment upon. Yes. And that is irresponsible. They don't. The physicians in the emergency room don't look up what happened to a rabbit's eye. They have data from human experiences, and today they have... But don't, the, don't the animal experiments precede the human ones? They have cell cultures today. They have cloned human no. skin. No. They you have need an intact organism to get a response, right. particularly what in the irritation to field. In a rabbit this is why the Food and Drug Administration does not approve the Dray's test okay. at the moment. All right. All right, they told me to cut you off, so I did. I'm, I'm under the audience's yeah. control. Are, am I correct in assuming you're Cynthia's mother? That's correct. Yeah, well, I think I have a feeling yeah. where you're coming really, from. Really, they here. should call this show the English show. The, I think the, I misquoted the, it today. No, uh, I don't. I my, think everybody's gotten my, a chance to talk. My problem right now is that we are talking and talking, and we will never come to a conclusion. That's right. I think one extreme is Ingrid, naturally, and I don't think anybody wants animal to be smashed and cruelly uh, uh, you know, mutilated. But we're talking about medical science, and medical science has to uh, uh, use animals as a living thing. We can't do this in, in test tubes. But we never will come to an agreement. My suggestion is that each side would come to the middle and would maybe form an alliance that will uh, more closely um, supervise the animal research and the laboratories and spend their money instead of going uh, on each separate ways and getting no place and doing it together because basically all the people that I spoke to that are for animal research are not for animal cruelty. Okay. Do you guys have pets? Do you have pets? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely. incarcerating these animals? All right, we have to go to a commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> Guests of the Ron Reagan Show stay at the world-famous Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. For superb accommodations, the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. For tickets to the Ron Reagan Show, call 213-661-0354. For a printed transcript of this program, send $5 to Ron Reagan Transcripts, Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. To order by credit card, call 303-831-9000. Rush and fax service are available. You see us wherever you go.
our lives are filled with excitement, adventure, and romance. But if you want to learn what we're really like, just call. We'll do all the talking while you just listen. Call 1-900-407-6116. 12 minutes minimum at $3 per minute. Must be 18. Imagine a party so big, everyone in America is invited. Fox presents New Year's Eve Live, a coast-to-coast -coast celebration that has it all. Featuring Sam Kinison in L.A. Rock steady in the 92! Penn and Teller in New York. Fox asked us to make 1991 disappear. <laughs> With special appearances by Southside Johnny. And the number one rock and roll band in the world, live, Guns and Roses. New Year's Eve Live, a 90-minute special on Fox. Time Magazine called him the master funny man of the age. Now, for the first time ever, the legendary king of comedy and music is captured on video in the best of Victor Borga. Pardon me, madam, are you laying eggs? Recorded live, this collector's edition of Priceless Comedy is a must for every Victor Borga fan. It's the incomparable Victor Borga in his best love, most heartwarming comedy performance of all time. <laughs> the best of Victor Borga on VHS is only $19.95 plus $3.95 postage and handling. To order your personal copy, you must act now. together for D.A. Young and Dr. Bombay. Yeah, great band. We're almost, uh, we're almost out of time, but I want to thank my guests, Martha Quinn, Dr. Edward Remmers, John Paul Jones de Joria, Cynthia Jelkman, Dr. John Young, and of course, Ingrid Newkirk. Thank you all very much for being here. That's about all the time we have. Remember, be kind to animals, even human ones. See you next time.